Hello everyone. Hi, my name is Jason Fox and I'm here to talk today about why cell phone companies should not update to the 5G networks. I know they mostly already have. This is sort of a, it should have been talked about a couple years ago. I still believe it, but we're going to talk about that today and make it a little more, you know, help you out a little bit. Okay, let's get into it real quick. Get this. Okay, so upgrading, right? Just like I said, there's the teacher, class, the date, and everything. I'm going to move the, move my little my, myself around a little bit. Bear, you know, bear with me. Okay, so the purpose of this is to talk about the, the 5G, what the difference is between the 4G and the 5G, and why they should not do it and the solutions to uh, not doing it and you know the reasoning for that. There's a lot to it. Uh, I'm going to try to go through everything kind of briefly. I'm not going to go anything hardcore in depth. But to do that would each I, I, each one would probably take about you know five to ten minutes to explain the reasoning for not. Uh, you'll, you'll understand more and I'll explain it more but you'll see. Okay so here You know, we're going to go through each part to, to inform you about it and the metrics and analysis and solutions and everything. You'll understand more as we get going. Okay, so here, this is the basic graph of why, why, why companies feel they need to update to from 4G to 5G. The, the increase in the amount of Internet of all things type devices, the cell phones, tablets, you know, businesses needing it because it's easier. There's a lot to it, but they all require data and bandwidth. And as time goes on, it, it just gets, the demand is going to get higher. It's not going to go down. It's always going to be the same or higher. Uh, cell phones themselves were, you know, Everybody has a cell phone, and, and especially with internet gaming, internet gaming is a huge thing right now, and companies are making games that are streamed some, from servers, the data is from the servers, uh, you know, like the Call of Duties or this new Diablo game that's going to be coming out. These are things that are require high amounts of bandwidth, and it's got to be accurate and quick bandwidth. It cannot be any sort of latency to it. Latency, if you know anything about, especially in video games, it'll get you killed because you'll see something but that has already happened a fraction of a second already and you're it's gone so as you can see in the graph over I'm gonna be looking to my left side but it'll be on your screen straight ahead but here on the left side this is a basic from 3G 4G and 5G 3G was really slow right? it's really slow and as you can see, the latency with an orange is through the roof on there. So the, you, know, you would talk to it, and it would have to go to the server and come back to you. But during that time, the latency would be so high, it would be so slow, that people were feeling it, and the demand was that they needed something quicker. 4G came out, and 4G, as you can see, has brought the latency down to about roughly 100 milliseconds. It's way faster. And it's very, very accurate. You can stream more data. As you can see, it's, it's a... a it's between, they, 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 they say between 50 to 100 megabits per second. Now that, that all depends on the network themselves. But, you know, there's, there's a little bit more to that. You know, there's, you know, there's a lot of factors involved. Anyway, so as you can see, when you get to 5G now, 5G is extremely low latency, 10 milliseconds. That's everything that everybody needs. I mean, that's basically almost instantaneous. You can't even tell, you know, and then up to a gigabyte per second of data. That is a lot of data. So that is good. And then here, again, the projected, this is just to show the projected of what is what they're expecting to come by 2022. They're expecting it to take up to at least roughly 37 percent of the market of the total total use of the, the market so the 
4G will still have a giant chunk because it's basically everywhere. It's in, you know you're driving on the freeway or the highways in between cities. 4G is there. Right now, 5G is nowhere in there. It cannot do it yet. I'll explain about that later. But yes, it, it's projected to become a lot bigger. Right now, the 6% is roughly just cities. And there's only a few cities that have it, and it's not over the entire cities. Okay. So here, updating. Here's the problem of the problem, the, the overall problem. Updating to the 5G network, it's very costly, and there's a lot of inherent issues that come along with it. I'm going to get into those, but they're, they're, they're not effective. If you have money, then it's okay. But if you don't have money, then it's not okay. And the costs will get passed on to the customers. It's, it can become a real mess. Um, and cell phone companies are kind of at a disadvantage because if one company, let's say Verizon, which you know is almost like the king they update their network to 5G. Everybody else kind of falls suit because you don't want to be known as the one that only has 4G still, even though it's still good and it's still good and it's accurate and it has a very, very wide country coverage. You know, they pe people when they hear 5G, it's better than 4G. So in their heads and their brains, faster is better. And it's it's all a mental mental thing. We all do it. We all have it. We have it with something. It could be something as a name product versus a non-name product or a store product. Um, just how we all are. Um, and, and because of this, cell phone companies want to make what seems to be the best product for the customer, especially towards businesses. They want something fast. If you don't have something fast, you're going to be left behind. People are going to push their way towards AT&T or Verizon or something or T-Mobile if the other ones do not provide this type of product. So it can be kind of rough, and it's going to be rough. OK, so here, the metrics of it is is that it's expensive. It's very expensive. Land alone will be the biggest problem, because with the, the towers themselves, 4G had a, lot, a larger signal or a larger wavelength of signal that can cover a larger area. Six, uh, 5G only cover, is 6 gigahertz, which 6 gigahertz is a very short frequency and it covers over a very small range. So the problem is, is you need more towers in a, in a, um, a more condensed area to, to give the coverage. Uh, I have also, because of that, the cost of each one is gets more and more, as we will see in, a, in a, another slide coming up. But the problem is, is that these things they they all they'll, they'll continually add up because if you're in the middle of a heavy city, you're going to need multiple towers. Because one of the issue has always been with the higher frequency signals is that it doesn't go through walls very well, and it also has the issue of line of sight. So if you can't shoot the signal through a building, you have to have one on one side and one side on, and another one on the other side. That is always the problem, and that is that will cause probably the biggest headache a lot for most of these companies. So it, it, it's it's just not good. It is not good for anyone. Uh, you know, there has been talks about that it could cause health issues. That I could not 100% find out to be true. So I did not put that in the presentation, but I have to, to, to at least mention it. Um, if it is true, then that, that blows everything away. Then if it's a problem, ethically, morally, it should not be done if it's causing health problems. That that will have to be a more, I think it's going to take more time and more study, especially as it, in these larger cities, like here in Phoenix or in LA. We'll find out. All right, let's talk about the solutions. So the solutions are pretty straightforward. Uh, the companies have to figure out a way to keep the cost down but provide the same amount of coverage. So my, my, uh, my thinking is that if I'm thinking as a CEO, I want 5G. I want 5G in some way. I want to provide it to the customers because I want to be able to stay competitive against the other company. If I'm at and I want to stay competitive against Verizon. If I'm Verizon, I want to stay competitive against T-Mobile, at and so on and so forth. So when uh, 
my idea is that you you gotta we gotta they gotta do an ad campaign that helps present having your own antenna near your home as a normal thing to see. So if you have your neighborhood, you think about the houses around it, one of them would have an antenna. So out of like maybe 10 homes, maybe one would have a 5G antenna. And by what I mean is that they will market it to lend, lease, or maybe like a pay program to where they would offer it to a customer. A customer could come and purchase it and put it on their home, but everybody around there would also share it. Of course, there's caveats to that, that you know, they have to have some sort of reliable you know, cable uh, internet at their home, you know, like a Wi-Fi type thing, to, to get the signal back to everybody else, to get it back to the servers and everything. Uh, this could be good, good and bad. I mean, there's positive and negatives to everything. But you know, in that case, I could see it as a as a good thing, especially for the companies, the like the cell phone companies. It takes a lot of a lot of the effort on their side and puts it on the you know the cable industry, you know, like a Cox or you know or you know it, it makes it so they have to work harder while you get the benefits of the speed. Um, and another thing I would like you know to see is that you know one thing that okay, let me explain this. So APS is a, has a, a program where you can get solar panels put on your roof and the solar panels, you don't get any cost benefit besides $30 a month off your bill. So you purchase, if you have to purchase uh, solar panels yourself, it's roughly like 30 grand for the panels and then you pay that over time and that's what your bill is until you pay off the 30 grand and then whatever your bill is after that from the power company is what you pay so you know if you 30 bucks a month or something of course prices always are continually going up so something similar needs to be done with that with a 5g antenna you tell the customer hey we put it on your roof you get 30 bucks off your bill a month forever as long as it's up there uh, to me that seems like a win-win situation the customer would get a reduced cost uh, and the you know the cell phone companies would get the land and the antenna location without actually having to spend the money or purchase it. Basically, the customer is giving them their land for free. Uh, I'm sure there might be some legalities to that, but to me, that just seems like that would be the best option. And I mean, <laughs> to try to get you know a bunch of antennas in the middle of a rural area. You know, I mean, everybody's seen the, the pine trees or, or the, I'm sorry, the, um, you know, the, the fake trees everywhere. You know, everybody knows it's a fake tree. It's an antenna. Everybody knows. It still looks terrible, but it's got to be done because there's got to be a lot of them and they're going to be everywhere. It's going to become pretty commonplace. Now, the only, again, the only negative part to that really, really, like, honestly could be is if they know that the signals the 5G signals could cause some sort of cancer or whatever, cause mental problems, or whatever it is, right, the health problems. But then that completely nixes all of it, and I don't know how they would even do that and legalities to that. I'm sure they would have to have contracts and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I think that would be the best the best solution. The, my last solution would be to just wait for the next thing, the next 6G, and rent out uh, a competitor's network. So... Verizon goes out and builds all these 5G towers, builds its giant network within these cities. ATT just says, hey, we'll lease some of these things, we'll lease some of your signal, and just piggyback on them and ride it until 6G comes out and then build a network of 6G. To me, that also seems like a good alternative. Now, Verizon, you know, or AT&T, whoever would do it first, would, it would almost behoove them not to help their competitor and use their network. So, and I, don't, I don't know, it would be a tough one. It would be a tough one. You would have to have some buddies maybe in the industry to hook you up, help you out. But, you know, that's here, neither here nor there. Okay, so here is the, the ver, uh, values and virtues. I actually really enjoyed this part. I like this website. It helps you analyze it and sort of make you think things you didn't know. I'm just going to go through it real fast. So utility, 
I mean, is it good or bad? Came off as high good. Well, uh, rights, again, did it respect the dignity and the right of everyone? Yes. Uh, oh, and utility, of course, it could hurt. It could hurt sales uh, if uh, if it's perceived that the network is slower in some way. So, like if ANTT tried to piggyback and wait for 6G and used Verizon's 5G network on a lend lease, then another competitor could come out and say, hey, AT&T is not truly 5G fast. It's still 4G, but you're using Verizon's network. You know, and then it could cause some problems. So it could hurt. That's the only reason why I didn't get a perfect score on that. Um, we'll go to Justice. Justice now. Justice was just above average. That one was kind of low. Uh, you know, does it have any? It does it have a prejudice or any specific interests? Uh, the cell phone companies, again, their job is to make money. That's the bottom line. That's all they want to do. Moral values tend to not be too high, but they want to. Rem they want the image that they're are looking out for you. So that's kind of a tricky one on that. And again, customers won't if they're not told that. AT&T or Verizon is renting out somebody else's network for the 5G and they're all, you know they're paying for a 4G with the rent and you know there's some there's some problems there so that one that one was a little bit lower as far as common good uh, that one was that was above average that was not quite good like high good um, if a company goes out and says Yes, I want to put out all these 5G towers everywhere. It's going to hurt the environment. I mean, you're, you've got to buy the land for it. It's expensive. Destroy things. Hurt nature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If uh, the cell phone companies put these towers and do like a lend lease program or you know something similar to APS as I was mentioning earlier, they will. I mean, you run if, if they know that there is health concerns and they did not say anything. That is really bad. That is not a good. I mean, that's just overall just bad. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I would not want to be in their shoes if something like that ever happened. I can't imagine how many lawsuits because they have to know. But again, I don't know if that's true. So I, that, that's why I didn't rate it any lower than that. If I knew it was true, that would have been blood red, and I don't think I would have even recommended it at that point. Um, and again, if the the last part of that is uh, for the common good, if the customers benefit from doing a lend lease program or the APS type program, or even waiting for the a six G, the customers can get help from that and keeping the cost of the phones down. Because, for example, for the for for the the 3G to 4G network upgrades, cell phone companies did not come out and just flip the cost directly onto the customer because they couldn't sell it to the customer because it, the data numbers, the speeds wasn't as drastic as I showed you before on that graph. It wasn't crazy difference. The latency is where the benefit was. However, trying to sell that to a customer that just uses it to go on the internet is not going to be as good because they're not using it for something that they need like now, like a streaming video. Back then, you know, YouTube and stuff was still coming up and still getting more and more popular. Right now, it is really popular and everybody streams. Everybody streams something at some point, uh, you know, at least once a week, I'd say, at least. So they, they need lower latency. So now when it goes to 4G to 5G, there, there has to be able to keep the cost down so that the customers don't see a giant price bump because some customers will not understand a lower latency versus a higher bandwidth. So bandwidth would be a better, a better an easier sell. And as far as virtue, I didn't see anything wrong with that. I, I didn't rate it 100 just because I never put anything, but it does reflect more good moral values. You're trying to get you're trying to get a better product out to the customer at a lower cost and help everyone. So but I, I, you know, here's the overall. It was an N83, and I. Would, so I mean, to me, it would be something I would recommend. One of these solutions, uh, and as far as I know, I don't think any, you know, the big 
the big companies, you know, AT&T, Verizon, or anything, have not done it. I think they're all pushing for a 5G network. I, I still don't see it as worth it, especially when you're going on like the interstate or something. There's no way you're just going to put towers all the way down those roads. I mean, that'd be ridiculous. You'd destroy so much nature. But again, I'm not thinking about money as much as more a moral compass type thing. And finally, the conclusion. Um, here we go. So cell phone companies, they needed us. They need a solution. They need to pick between 4G or stay with their or stay with 4G or go to 5G. What do you do? I, you know, with the negatives of the cost of the towers, acquiring land, hurting the environment, uh, the interferences from buildings, the need for as many towers. Uh, it's it's like uh, I can't. It's like currently there are four or for 4G there are 300 in uh, like an LA area, but to get the 5G in area you need 3,000 more 5G towers to get the same coverage. I mean, that has a lot of land, that's a lot of money, that's a lot of damage to the environment. You know, places like California, everything costs money, especially out there with, uh, you can't even take a tree out of your yard unless you get approved by the government. So, I don't know, in some cities, I don't think it'll be worth it. Maybe some other cities where they're more open, like Arizona, large rural areas, it may not be that bad, but in somewhere in like a dense city, High population New York, yeah, it, it would be expensive. So overall, do I do it? Would I recommend it? Uh, is it worth it for them to go to 5G? No, I would say no. I would say they need to figure out something as a hump between there. Again, maybe wait, you know, waiting for the 6G, but maybe renting or leasing a competitors' network. Let them do the legwork. Let them do all the heavy loads. Let them take out all the loans, whatever it is. They're fighting all these legal battles to get land. Blah blah blah. Let them do it. Uh, I don't know because you know networks change so quickly. Um, I think it was 2013 or so when 4G came out, like full force, or 2011. I don't remember exact. But it wasn't that long ago. They come out really fast. So it's like as soon as they get it done, the next thing is already on the, the horizon. So maybe it might be 10 years. That's what I'm saying, like a lend lease or try to give uh, customers, get in the customer's head. To, yes, seeing a tower on somebody's home or an antenna, I think that's worth it because each antenna is like 30 grand. You know, you tell a you know a customer, hey, we'll give you Thirty bucks off a month off your cell phone bill if you just let us put a tower on your roof or next to your your house somewhere. I, I don't think a lot of customers would be too upset with that. Uh, I do know personally from uh, my uncle, he does have a tower in his backyard, and they are paying him to have it in his backyard. Now I don't know if it was a 5G tower because I couldn't get a hold of him, but I do know it's a it's not a giant eyesore. It almost looks like it's something. It almost looks like a weather station that's in his backyard, but it's 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 an antenna tower to cover his entire area. Because prior to that, you could not have an AT and T cell phone and get any reception. It was only Verizon that was it. So now you can get AT and T perfect reception over there. It's fantastic, and this is out in uh, rural. Uh, it's like Rochester in New York, so it's like out in boonies, uh, not city at all, not heavy cities big difference but anyway yeah it's so again i don't think it's worth i think they need to figure out something i think they were kind of pushed into it uh they were forced because one company said yes we're gonna go with it and they're stuck so i i i, I think that they should have waited and i think they were a little premature on it uh my name is jason again thank you for taking your time to sit here and, and watch the video if you have any questions or comments i know there's probably a lot of information that I skip through a little quickly because I'm trying to keep the time down because it's really easy to talk about this stuff. Uh, please feel free to email me, email me or contact me in some way. Uh, I go to GCU and I do appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.